getting boring, you throw me away I wonder what you're hiding from, wonder what the fuck went wrong Cause once upon a time we were as merry as the day was long guitar players or maybe roadsy people, classic organ kind of guys, whatever, uh, who like the swooshy wooshies. If you've watched my channel regularly, you know that one of my favorite modulations is the Univibe because it is not a chorus, but it's chorus-like. It's not a phaser, but it's phase-like. It's just this chorusy, swooshy wooshy. If you do it subtly, it just gives you a guitar sound, a beautiful vintagey kind of motion that's swooshy, swoosh motion. The classic univibes that are faithful recreations of the actual Shinai univibe, the Hendrix one big because of the thing and all that, they can get rather pricey. Pedal Porn has one that clocks in at over $400 dollars, uh, actually uh, 450 euros, something like this. It's not inexpensive. I reviewed it. It's exactly like the original. It's really good. It's really throbbing and amazing, but it's a lot of money. It's rather big. Does the one thing. And uh, yeah, it's also hard to get because they don't build a lot of them. So I sold mine and it went immediately. Why did I sell it? Well, how many Univibes does a man need? Also, if I want that sound, I can literally for... $79 slash right now on sale for $59, get a digital one. Well, how do you get the digital one into all of this analog gear? Well, I'm showing you. The digital one is, oh, I have to switch myself today because Leslie is at work. And um, whether or not that's going to be completely chaotic, we'll find out. I don't know what buttons to press. I think this one. There we go. It's the Polyvibe from my good friend Guillaume from Blue Cat Audio. Now, Blue Cat Audio has their own... VST amp simulation with loads of slots pre and post for effects. If you get in the Polar Vibe, you can easily run it within their VST. But I'm running it completely standalone. I'm showing you only the Polar Vibe with my normal setup, running a guitar into the Tone King into the Ox. And how we're doing this, I'll show you in a, show you in a second. So is this a Univibe? Yes, but it can do quite a bit more. So you got the classic mode. You got the reversed mode. What does that mean? Well, Innovibe usually goes and does notches, like 
notches in your waveform. The reversed mode literally, instead of notches, does peaks. So it's very pronounced where it is. And then there's the phase mode, which does different kind of notches. Don't ask me. This is, of course, the speed. My mouse is very irresponsive, irresponsible, unresponsible. And you can see the speed. Why am I saying this? Well, because it's a French audio. Uh, French audio. French eyes. <laughs> oh, the allergies are killing me. Because it's a French company. The speed. I, I do this automatically. I am weird. Le Enning. It's my name. So, classic intensities, of course. How much of it do you want? And that's pretty straightforward. So, the filter shape. Where is it univibing? Which, of course, the traditional vibes don't have, but there's so much more control here. So, you can say where you want that. How wide do you want it to vibe or phase or do other stuff? Um, separation is actually really interesting because those notches can be spread apart or you can have a single notch, which for the reverse mode would be very interesting because then you have kind of something like a very pointy, cute filter. So if you do zero separation, you've got one frequency that it's doing. Interesting to know. And that changes what direction it goes into. And then the LFO, what is an LFO? A low frequency oscillator. It is a thing that makes it move. Now, if you don't want it to move, set depth to zero, and then you set the frequency. So we could probably do a cocked wah, cock, <laughs> with zero separation, one frequency, and no movement, and then you have a cocked wah sound. We're going to try that. Rage is, of course, the speed of the LFO, which you can sync to your DAW to whatever subdivisions you want. When I turn the sync on, the D phase comes on. What does that mean? I need to sneeze. Allergies are kicking my ass. If the sync is on, it's going along with your DAW. But what if you want the down motion of the vibe to not be on the down beat, but on the second beat? Well, you can then move the face so that what you want on the down beats or the off beats is actually where it is. Very nicely thought through, Mr. Guillaume. Swing changes the LFO distribution. So it's not this, it's, get it? Not this, but And stereo makes it freaking stereo. That's a huge reason to get this because the traditional Univibe obviously is freaking mono. If you wanted stereo, you gotta buy two. That's a lot of money. So how I, how I, how am I setting this up? Let me show you. So here's the Polyvibe in Cubase and you can see I'm talking and recording at the same time. I'm recording what I'm doing on this track right here, but I have a track set up to monitor. It's monitoring the input that's coming from the aux. And on the input, I've got the polyvibe. So we're getting my normal clean sound from the amp, but with the polyvibe on it, which of course I could turn on and off. And I'm monitoring through this track, which is also receiving the aux. And that track is actually going to a separate virtual out on my universal audio so that I have the uh, direct out from that monitor track, which means I have the lowest possible latency. I've got this old check to Nick Johnson here, you know, classic E3 single call strategy kind of thing. And if I turn this off, this is what it sounds like. Clean. <laughs> That's uh, going through the golden reverberator by Universal Audio. And let me tune it again. Let's turn it on. On literally the first preset. Talking about preset, there are tons of them. We're going to look at some. I think you don't even need all those switches and buttons because the presets alone totally do the job. <laughs>
that that's one hell of a univibe. Now let's tweak the knobs a bit. <laughs> Now, with certain settings, of course, when you're pushing individual frequencies that much, you got to be careful with volume. And I wish it just had a big input and output volume. It doesn't have this. It's got a volume up here, which you have to utilize when you're going that crazy. <laughs> Now you gotta be careful, obviously with more extreme settings, it will sound not like Univibe and you can feel it a little bit more digital because it just does stuff that is not familiar to you. And as soon as it's not familiar to you, it sounds more artificial. If it sounds more artificial, then it doesn't sound like the real thing. Well, because the real thing can't make those sounds. <laughs> Let's go back to Classic Bride here. And play with the stuff down here. <laughs> And now obviously, without a beat in your DAW, syncing it to something is stupid because we can't really, you know, hear that. So 
let's talk about a couple of other, a couple of other things here, like the presets for which I have to go to a different view here. There are a lot of them in classic mode, in phase mode, in reverse mode. You can call them up here, but you can also go to the preset browser and go to the three different modes. Let's just step through a few here. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Let's go to phase mode. <laughs> feeling that it adds a brilliance to my clean tone in the top end that's just really 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 nice let's go to crazy reverse mode <coughs> gotta be careful with the volumes there let's let's see <coughs> There's, there's a cat. It's not blue though, it's a black cat. <laughs> The cat had uh, grass stuck in her teeth. I had it was emergency grass grassinectomy, grassinectomy. Gra I don't know what is what it's called. You can hear there's some spikes going, so you might want to drop that down. Bubbly wow wow stuff going on. I 
I, I'm a big fan of filter sounds, not for your main guitar or whatever, but for those beautiful ear candy guitars, a little bit on the left, a little bit on the right, the, the ones that are doing the thirds or the sevenths or the cool sounds. It's really cool to put that in that context because it makes it thinner, but also stand out more of the mix. I love filter sounds. I gotta admit that. Like this. Put some delays on there. I like stuff like this. I mean, there's a lot. It's a little bit much there. He have vocal type filters. Now we have the cock bar thing. Look, the depth is all the way down. If you see that. Now there's a lot to discover. What if you have something that you like, but you want to explore things a little bit similar, but not too different? Well, freaking Blue Cat's got you covered. Let me show you. They have this Explorer, the Tone Map Explorer. So what that is, is there are different tone maps. Right now we're on the classic one. And let's click on this. Right, let's click on this here, Fast Swing. But then it shows you ones that are similar and how far they are away is how different they are. So classic slow, classic vibe and classic bright are very close to each other because they're very similar. So go to a different tone map, and now we got face, slow face. So they're getting faster down here. This is generally phase mode. Reverse mode, let's see, we're in subtle here. You get the idea, you can explore the sounds. Well, these are clearly the, the vocal ones. So they show you the distance based on how different the settings are. doing just a nice way to play around with it i think the polyvibe is freaking killer is it as simple as a pedal on your board no because it's not on your board but it's like 79 bucks and it's a lot more vibes than any pedal could possibly have. No pedal would have that amount of flexibility and tweakability and save your own presets, share your presets with your friends, include it into uh, their VST amp um, or the phase mode and all that stuff. So realistically, 
No, it's not the simplicity of let's smack a pedal on the board, but it also doesn't mean that you have to use it only in the virtual context, because you see, I'm playing a real amp through. I mean, come on, bang for the buck. If it's for production or recording, I realistically, especially for the classic stuff, for the straightforward classic mode, classic vibe, bam, I see no reason to spend 450 bucks on a box just because it's a box and it reminds you of the thing that Hendrix played. I think that's a little bit ridiculous, especially if it sounds like this. <laughs> As I said, bang for the buck. I'm a huge fan of the Univibe. This nails it and then some. And I'm a huge fan of filtered effects, which this has in a way with the reversed and all that. It's not a typical filter, but you can do a lot. I love stereo. This has stereo. Again, bang for the buck. Right now, $59. Why wouldn't you get this just to have a pretty damn good optical univibe thingy in your arsenal. That's all I'm saying. Thanks, Guillaume, for commissioning the video. I love your stuff. I love you as a person, which is for me very important. Knowing where you spend your money, you spend your money with a cool guy who's an ultra nerd. So he's one of us, people. Well, thanks me for switching, I guess, which sucked, but okay. And we're going to see you on the Flippity Flop. The links are below. Buy it directly from Guillaume. Animals at the end. Feeling comes up again. Prepare my.